There you go. Okay, folks, we're going to get going. I always like to uh, ask AGP if we're ready as I'm looking at the monitor. How are we doing? Okay, here we go. Welcome, everyone. Um, today's Tuesday, March 3rd. 2015. We're at the Morro Bay Vets Hall. Um, it's 4 p.m. We're located at 209 Surf Street here in Morro Bay. This is a special meeting. It is a budget priority study session, and we're glad for you all to turn out. Thanks for coming. Um, all council members are present, and we do have a quorum, obviously. And uh, at this point, we're rolling right into this, so there's no um, salute or anything like that. We're getting right down to business. So we will open up for public comment um, for this budget priority study session, and uh, I would open up for public comment at this time. Anybody would like to come forward, please do. Hi, my name is Robert Davis. I live in Morro Bay. I'd like to speak to several items that are listed in the staff report for today's workshop. The first is bicycling. Um, I think our top priority for bicycling projects is to preserve our class one multi-use trail from Main Street to the Cloisters. Uh, the pavement's been badly buckled and cracked by tree roots and the southern end of that is flooded every time we get rain and uh, <coughs> collects mud and debris. Um, our second bike priority is to provide citywide parking at popular destinations and especially at all public buildings. And third, please look at the intersection of Quintana and Main Street and see if that can be redesigned to help northbound bicyclists get from Main Street onto the bike trail. Uh, <clears throat> the second item I'd like to talk about is car parking. Um, I would ask that we go slow in, slowly in implementing major changes in our parking management. Um, as we develop the update for the general plan, parking is going to be an important part of the land use and circulation elements. And I would hate for us to make radical changes now that may not fit with future uh, uh, business district designs. Third, I strongly support coordinated event management at the city level. Um, the city and the business community need to act as partners in attracting tourists to spend weekends in Morro Bay. Fourth, uh, linking the Embarcadero with the downtown. If you stand at the top of the Centennial Staircase and look up Morro Bay Boulevard, there is nothing that attracts <clears throat> someone to walk the three blocks up to our downtown business district. So I would urge that we be creative in building something that'll make people want to walk those three blocks. Um, Fifth, broadband. In 2010, 20% of people who had jobs worked at home at least one day a week. In the past 10 years, the telecommuting workforce has grown 80%. Let's give them high-speed internet. That's a huge compet competitive advantage in recruiting for head of household jobs to come to Morro Bay. And six, economic development. I, I encourage the staff to begin building a five-year economic development strategic plan to work with the general plan update. You, you know, um, uh, I, I know we had the three minute. I, I know we've got, we don't have as many people, so you just, you just want to consider if you had any other comments. That's you it. Know. Okay, good. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, okay. Red. Thanks. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor, Council, staff, everyone at home. My name is Keith Taylor, resident of Morro Bay, friend of the Morro Bay Fire Department. Um, I'm here with some items that I think we need to do. Uh, one is to uh, maintain and strive to continue to improve our paramedic service, which is an extension of our local emergency rooms to our citizens' homes. Maximize our community paramedicine 
through the future affordable health care system programs. One. Uh, two, uh, ensure we have enough staffing to cover our simultaneous emergency incidents in our community. Sometimes the sex second incident requires a response from our off-duty personnel from home or our neighbors through mutual aid. Um, ensure our firefighters have the proper equipment to perform their jobs serving our community through true equipment depreciation accounts. Uh, also, uh, find ways to reduce our fire department's re response times to North Morro Bay only because I live there. <laughs> okay? Uh, and that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Keith. It shouldn't be just because you live there. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, Mayor Irons, uh, members of the council, and city staff. My name is Lisa Ludovici. I'm the Government Affairs uh, Manager, Senior Manager for Charter Communications. I'm also a resident and homeowner here in Morro Bay. Um, as the Council considers today its budget for the next two years and the role of broadband in the community, I wanted to make sure you are aware of this significant investment that Charter has made in this community. Charter has invested more than $5 billion in infrastructure and technology since 2012 across our 29 state footprint including $271 million in California just last year. Charter has a robust, extensive fiber network running through the city of Morro Bay, serving customers both residential and commercial, including Old Town, the Embarcadero, uh, and the Dyne Energy facility. Our network is capable of speeds up to 100 megabits per second via a coaxial drop or a dedicated symmetrical fiber uh, internet connection up to 10 gigabits a second, or a private optical point-to-point -point ethernet service for up to 10 gigabits a second. Our network also has the ability to scale to 100 gigabits per second if that's what a customer needs. Furthermore, Charter offers a suite of other commercial services such as website hosting, desktop security, business phone, and PRI, which is like T1 with SIP trunking, which connects it to the internet. Charter has partnered with a number of other communities across the country to enhance economic development. One success, successful example is using public funds for last mile construction grants to offset those costs for businesses looking to purchase advanced services. We can also do this for home businesses. In February, Charter met with city staff, and we would be happy to return and share more details about the programs that we have found to be successful in other communities. We look forward to partnering with the city. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Good afternoon. That's a hard act to follow. Uh, Brent Haugen, uh, Morro Bay Tourism Bureau, uh, Mayor Irons, uh, City Council, and City Staff. I'm just here to be a listener and a partner to uh, the city. Um, I think there's a lot of great uh, items on the list that are going to be discussed today and down the road. But I would also, I'm also here to encourage you to, with uh, continued funding for the Morro Bay Visitor Center. I feel that it plays a vital role, not just for visitors, but uh, for the overall business community. Um, and it uh, shows our great hospitality for our city. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Linda Fidel. I'm a resident of Morro Bay. And together with Nancy Castle, a co-coordinator of the community dinners uh, that are offered here in Vets Hall every Monday night. I feel like I'm beginning to live here. I'm going to bring, <laughs> bring my sleeping bag. Um, anyway, we're here to ask you to, again, waive the rental fee for our use of Vets Hall on Monday nights. Um, a letter explaining some of our reasoning was sent out to you in a packet. And if you don't have a copy of it right now, then I have additional copies that can be brought to you. The, um, the dinners are served each Monday by a coalition of people who are from Morro Bay, mostly to people who are residents of Morro Bay. 
As of last night, we have served food to 2,540 people since we began January 6th. Uh, we will be explaining more about what we've done and how we've done it at the March 10th meeting, so we'll bore you with the details at that time. What, we, what I want to say tonight is that our use of Vets Hall is relatively uh, light. The meals are cooked off campus and brought here, so we don't use that kind of facility. We use electricity a little bit, water as little as we can, and uh, generally we, tr we leave the place clean. We find it clean usually and leave it clean so that we don't have much of an impact on the building, or at least we try not to. On the other hand, there's a great deal of impact on the people for whom we are able to serve dinners. So please, if you can, again, for the next fiscal year, considering waiving the fees to uh, use this hall for the community dinners on Monday night. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Anybody else for public comment? Seeing none, we'll close public comment and bring it back to council. Thanks very much for all your input. Um, and we'll turn it over to Mr. Buckingham for presentation, leading us off through this. Certainly, I'd love to do that short presentation. And first, our esteemed police chief is going to pass out some of my business cards um, so that if you don't have my email address, um, if you want to, I think we've got good notes for everything that was just shared. Um, but if you have, if you want to send those notes, please do to me. Or if you want to, if you have other good ideas, um, I'm not sure if there'll be another opportunity for public comment partway through this or not. But if you want to provide more direct input to your city staff, please do so. You can start with me. Chief, please be nice. Um, okay, so the purpose of this is to provide you, the city council, and this is great. We had residents, we had businesses, and general public an opportunity to provide initial and non-binding uh, guidance or input into the budget process. So this is a step in the budget process that we have not done before. What normally happened is um, the staff would do their thing that the staff does and then we would give it to the council and show up at the first budget workshop without having any um, sort of formal or semi-formal opportunity for folks and council to provide some initial sort of prioritized input. So th what, what we hear tonight will help your staff um, as we build our budgets sort of make some initial prioritization decisions based on, on the things that we hear, the, we hear tonight. Um, so that's what I think we're about. So this is the schedule that we're on. Um, to, uh, tonight is a uh, budget actually this afternoon and ending no later than the start of the Planning Commission tonight. Um, so the good news is we have a hard end time. Uh, for this meeting. Um, but so right now we're doing initial guidance and then your staff is going to go do good staff work for two months. Um, and there's a lot of internal steps in there, which is them doing their thing and then bringing it to the, the, the to Susan, um, our finance director, and her doing her thing and her bringing it to me and me doing my thing and going back and forth. But that will result in us pre presenting you a preliminary budget on the 1st of May. And then we will get together in this room a few weeks later to have the second budget workshop where, um, where we will have taken this initial guidance, put it into a budget, and then we'll all get to work back and forth through that. Um, we have a third budget workshop on the calendar. Um, I put it on the calendar, we did. We'll cancel it if we don't need it, um, but we stuck it on the calendar, so we have a date for it at least. And then um, on the 9th of June, we will anticipate adopting the budget and that gives us one extra meeting the 23rd of June in case we mess everything up and uh, don't listen to you effectively um, and we can come back two weeks later and do it again. So that's the, uh, that's the schedule that we're on. So the, uh, the rules of engagement, this isn't a movie. Um, so the first rule of engagement for this meeting is there's not many rules. So, uh, so I, 
I see this as sort of a free-flowing discussion. Uh, Mayor, if you want to have public comment again, however you all want to work that up on the dais too. Um, the staff is mostly listening. Um, I think the council and the people are mostly providing input. Um, the staff will seek clarity, so at points we might ask some questions to make sure that we understand um, what, uh, what's being uh, said. Um, can't emphasize enough, this is initial and non-binding input. <laughs> you get to see this several more times, um, but, uh, but it's good for your staff to hear this so that, as, so that we're not building budgets sort of in a cloud. Um, and, uh, and I'll note for everybody, I think most in the room are aware we do have a great set of goals and objectives. So this supplements those, it absolutely does not replace those. And in fact, the goals and objectives are, are the most important thing that we're going to be looking at as we go through the budgeting process. But as we look at the money available and the goals and objectives, what we hear tonight and from the public and going forward will help us if we have to make some priority decisions. Um, so there's two objectives and we can only do one of them. The first budget you will see will be the one that probably funds whatever priorities we hear are most important tonight. Okay, so that's it. So um, there are three, uh, this is a direct cut and paste from the staff report. So there are three slides here. We can go back and forth. I've numbered them in order. Um, but, uh, and, and so to whatever extent we love structure, um, there's some goodness sometimes to sort of free flowing. <laughs> so, because what's really on people's minds comes to the top. So, we did not drive a structure here at all. Um, and, uh, and we can go through these one by one, but there's, I'd say, there's some general categories. There's things that are on our goals and objectives. Um, there's other things that we have routinely done and sort of uh, had to hammer out funding for different events and organizations and those things. Um, and that's, those are the, uh, the main, and then the third category that's on here is, um, are items that, uh, that, um, I'd say area, areas of the squeaky wheel. Um, so, and we heard some, so Red's input was exactly what I was sort of hoping for. What we heard were from Red's perspective, what the top three priorities are under unmet bike needs, which, uh, which might help us come back and put money against those things in, in, in the initial budget instead of some other sort of bike thing. So those are the sort of three areas. Um, and uh, Mayor, I'll turn it back to you and I'm happy to, to, we're all happy to continue to sort of exchange on this. And if we want to go at least start with, with initial comments from the council or start through the list, I'm good either way. Okay, great. Well, since it's free for all, I think we'll just take that, um, take that position and just get, get started on it. Um, because clearly, um, it, it, I think it'd be kind of interesting to hear what direction the rest of council wants to, to go. Obviously, um, in the staff report, we have all our goals listed. So whether or not the council wants to just go through all these goals one by one and kind of and, and talk through that, um, it'd be interesting to see how we want to go about that. Um, I, I do have a, a couple questions before we get started um, based on some of the comments for staff. And, and I just wanted to... Um, uh, this would be for Mr. Lavic, Rob. Um, on there are some um, comments about the bike priorities and um, particularly paving the Class One bike path between um, Main Street and Cloisters. And I think there was that was discussed last budget cycle, and I think we had some discussion on f prioritizing that and funding that. Um, did, did we? Did we not have that part of this year's cycle to address kind of the uh, rooted areas of the of that bike path? And I think it's it's by the high school area. Maybe I'm wrong on that. What we discussed is in our existing maintenance budget, there's probably enough to do maintenance on um, some of the worst problem areas, and um, um, I have not yet through the transition gone out there to inspect those areas, but okay. will in uh, short order to basically make recommendations. There's also a piece of equipment that you budgeted for, the skid steer, that seems to be um, um, almost impossible to, to enter into a lease agreement with our proposed vendor. So we're bringing, we need um, 
explicit council approval for that before okay. our, our vendor will will allow us to enter and leave. So you'll see that at your next council meeting. So it's a little smaller piece of equipment we can actually um, work on the bike path with easier than bringing out our larger heavy equipment. Um, so okay. Um, Okay, and, and then great based on this discussion what we can now do is make sure that in the next eight weeks We do an initial engineering assessment of how much it would cost to maintain that bike path and thus we can have that for you in the budget We we will evaluate the budget might put it in the budget But at least it well, it'll be in there either b above or below a line, but at least now we're clear. That's a priority um, and uh, and we can do the assessment to make sure we know how much that's that would cost in this coming budget Okay, and, and then also if there's any immediate areas we will address those Immediately in this current budget year with existing maintenance funds Beautiful and then um, just for general clarity when we when we looked at if I'm just going through the goals uh, just one by one, and the, the first goal may, being develop the new WRF. Um, as far as funding for that, um, it, we're pretty much locked into funding process for that. So, uh, you know, how much discussion council has on on the the develop the WRF as far as budgeting and funding is fairly automatic. Can you you want to talk about that a little bit? I believe so. I, I think we've received a lot of direction on moving forward with that project, and I'm not sure that we need to spend a lot of time in this budget workshop discussing the funding. The funding will come out of um, fund accumulation from the wastewater mm -hmm. fund to fund that project. Um, and then we have our current rate analysis and study, and ultimately, a prop 218 going to a rate increase that will support that uh, funding of that project so okay. I think we're down the road on that so I'm you know I probably taken up way more time than we needed to okay. just talking so about WRF that. is not in the, on any of these pages because of that okay. we, we, we don't think that the, the funding is will be in place to do what we need to do without and we know that that's a priority for the city okay and as far as um improved streets measure q funds is our funding basically i'd say that we falls in the that. same general category okay. we'll bring forward a, a um a candidate list of projects to council okay. with in the capital projects program with the budget but uh i don't know that we need any further direction to um fund streets okay. and to um, work on priorities so it seems like uh, from goal three four five six seven eight and nine or are, and are ones we can have more free-flowing discussion on if, if you will um, so any, any um, comments from council on how they'd like to go through this I mean we're on goal number three we can just kind of go through that um, and I'm looking for comments and for a point we've got points on both sides I'll jump to to Christine, I think last time I skipped over you, so how about if I jump to Christine first? Okay, thanks. Um, these are just a few things that I think in, in in the past we've had agencies come forward, so my question is, so far, by my account, we've had an ask letter, a request letter for SCORE, for the NOR clinic, and for the Monday night dinner fee waiver for our vets hall. So... On my list of things we did last year, and these are things that I think it would be good to get from staff because we will know easily what we funded last year. Last year, I know we funded SCORE, but in the letter we received today, it doesn't tell us how much we funded them, and I did not have time to look it up in the budget. Is it 5000 No, I think SCORE was 1000 I think SCORE was 1000 last year. It was, okay. So things... Um, so, okay, so obviously SCORES asked us again. We will have an ask from our EVC membership. Dues will come up, so it would be good to sort of know what we gave last year and, and what the expectation may be. But I, we know we're going to get it. Last year we gave uh, $1,000, I think, to Slow County Housing Trust Fund, and they were really involved in the project we have going on now. And then last year I think Morro Bay 4th got 10000 of Economic Development Fund money. But these these little bits of money take a lot of time sometimes in our discussion. So if we had some um, feedback or we kept a running list of who was asking us for the ask, then I think that would be helpful. 
And then, of course, if we could see what we gave last year and just anticipate that, we, you know, certain things we will get another ask for EVC, for example. So maybe staff outreach to them, letting them know our budget process is moving forward and they might want to send something to us sooner than later. And then the other thing is about Shero. Since talking about, oh, sure. Just, uh, so we'll, we'll take a look at putting information out to the community that says, by this date certain, before the budget process is done, we would like your ask in so we're not doing and so we can do some initial scrub do some analysis and bring that to you instead of having sort of a, a parade of of folks Asks. at the next yes. budget workshop yes and i think that in the finance director's files i'm sure she'll have the last year of the requests we didn't fund as well so we'll reach out specifically to or we're, what we won't say is there's a whole lot of money and come and get it frankly um unless you want us to but we will say is we, we note that you were able to um, to uh, get some funding from the city last year. If you think that you're going to be looking for that next year, then please you know let us know now by this date certain at what level, um, and then we'll do it a little more broadly too on the web, on Facebook, on other yes. outreaches, so that any other organizations out there have a chance to input. Yes, thank you. Senior nutrition, I neglected to mention as well. Um, and the reason I asked for this is because that's a lot of public relations, really. We don't fund them with, for very much money, truly, but it definitely touches people. The second thing about bike, since we're on the bike thing, where are the sharrows on Beachcomber, Sandalwood, and Embarcadero? Are they in process somewhere? That's part of the, um, I can't remember what the name of the project is. It's, it's tied in with the, the high school um, striping project too. And the striper is been contracted with our street paving project. So they'll be here um, in the next uh, few months to do that striping work. So instead of going out for a separate contract, we lumped them in together. So I would anticipate those sharrows um, two months, um, I would say. Okay, so we don't have to request those. No, no. Those are it, as part of uh, a BTA grant that we received um, that uh, I think it's Cayucas North North Ca Main Cayucas Gap Closure Project. Okay. okay, great, thank you. And then finally, in terms of process tonight, I don't mind, I'm really very flexible. I don't mind going through the goals and talking about funds as they come up. Okay, so thanks for letting me get those things out. Thanks. Thanks, Christine. Matt? Um, I have a general question to speak in the, the macro view first going through this. Um, and I'm gonna speak maybe down to it so I can understand it. So we have X amount of money for, for a budget in a given year. We have our goals and objectives. Within our, that, that budget um, process, we have certain services that, do not, that are inarguable. We're going to have to have them. Um, so do we, should, are we going to start with a, a number that we know that we have? We have basic services, fire, police, city staff. Do we have a number after all those basic services that we know we're going to be able to put into play to look at these other priorities? For me, and maybe that's a little bit overly simplistic, I'm sorry, um, because looking at it, some of these three through 10 are looking at the, the safety services. And since that's part of the, the budget process, you know, Red brought up the, the bike needs. And in terms of, so do we know that number that we have to play with or that we can offer our suggestions in terms of priorities? We have a list of priorities in here. So if I'm making sense here, do we have that list? We, we do not. You're making total sense, and we're at the initial point here. Okay. So we don't have that number. We, we will be in the two months ahead developing the staff budget, projecting revenues, um, and then I would anticipate uh, bringing to you, um, you know, so in different areas there's going to be, you know, there is X amount of dollars, or maybe it's in the whole general fund dollars available, and then we essentially have have racked and stacked a list of things um, that uh, that you know general plan. <laughs> how much for that one? The, um, the bike path. This one costs that much. Um, it uh, or uh, let's um, harbor office needs assessment. Structure needs assessment. Here's how much that costs. And then, uh, and then, we will hopefully be able to lay those things sort of out on a on a list, and then draw a line where the money runs out. 
Okay, um, and, uh, and one follow up and, and to and that. So what this does is helps us do an initial prioritization on that list so that we have, we're, we're starting with some input from the community and from the council instead of just the staff. Okay, got it. Okay, that makes perfect sense in term, ter terms of doing that. So I don't want to jump the gun in terms of this process, knowing that we have three or four months to go through this, because we will have those basic things that are inalienable that are going to be taken out no matter what. So then we want to prioritize some of these other items such as quality of life and then staff will come back and be able to tell us later okay we will have so much for quality of life rather than quantity based on budget okay i'm fine okay great man thanks john so maybe uh, just further clarity and i may may be the only one confused uh, in terms of exactly what you want but but apparently um Maybe we're just talking about um, macro issues that might influence the process for development of the budget, not necessarily, gosh, it would be nice to have item X, Y, Z, even though in the pre-preliminary um, uh, information that was sent out to us, there were some specific um, uh, questions that were asked that could be interpreted as line item items that would fit into the budget. So uh, I, I just was looking for some kind of clarity as to um, what you want. And I guess what I've got is basically anything is open, kind of say what you want and um, try to lend some credence to either process and or things that are important to us as a city council individually. Am I kind of? Yeah, I think that's right. Um, and, and so, you know, look, looking at the list of things, you know, I'm interested to, to know from your perspective and from the community's perspective, how important is a customer facing planning and building permitting uh, inter web based system? So is that is that so that uh, so that as we're going out and looking at that, is that something that we want? So that system would be where you can go online and submit your plans online. Um, and uh, and it's reviewed online and you can track and see which office has it now and it's at fire or it's at planning or it's at, it's at where customer f that that costs something so in all of these things um, you know when we sort of hear things talked about that means it's on your mind <laughs> and the things that got no little checks marks next to it it means that maybe it's not as high on our mind um, the staff is of course going to provide some of our input there's some staff internal things that we may ask to budget for. And, and then I should also note back on Mr. Uh, Makowetsi's question that, uh, that as we go through this budget process, there, um, there, there is a certain amount of the most recent Dynegy payment that is sort of available for one-time activities. You know, if, you, if we spend it all this year, let, let's say we spent it all this year, then it's not going to be a, available next year. Um, and uh, so, you know, how, how and we're, we've got, as Matt said, we've got four or five months to do this, but how do we want to deal with that? Maybe some of that wants to be uh, held back for Dynagy future projects, um, I, you know, to, to, to work the Dynagy issues, so to speak. But so some of that, though, could be available for one-time events like a five-year economic uh, development plan or a um, information technology strategic plan for the city or the work which, is, which would identify a planning and building permit uh, customer-facing web-based web, uh, web system. Um, so, so some of those things are going to be, be – uh, there's, a, I think, perhaps a little bit extra money, well, not a little bit, a fair chunk of change extra this year that is in addition to what we would normally have as, um, as uh, um, discretionary spending um, in this budget. Okay. No? Yeah, thank you. I think uh, my question is somewhat of a follow-up to Mr. Headings. And um, I know when we finished the original goal-setting document, we, we asked, or I think there was a comment about, as we knew we were coming back to this first budget hearing, if you could identify some areas that staff initially from looking at the goals really would like to make sure that you get some feedback from the council on at this point. So the, that's what I interpret these questions one through 26. Am I right on that? 
those were some of the things that from the some different departments. I'll, I'll tell you that this was not a scientific effort or a big brain effort to, to put these. This was look through the goals and objectives, skipped over the first whole goal because we knew that that's essentially we know how to fund the WRF. And other ones were skipped over because it probably doesn't cost a lot of money. It costs some staff time. But the ones you see on here are the ones that likely cost real money um, in order to get that thing moving. Okay, good. So my, my thought would be to avoid going through the goals and almost having a, another goal session, yeah. uh, perhaps particularly seeing that we have about an hour and a half, let's start with these uh, 26 and, and work on those um, and try to leave room for additionals that you know, either staff has thought of between you know, this and, and now and then also from, from any of us. Okay, any other comments to that? I was actually thinking, it's kind of interesting, thinking just the opposite and it kind of by, uh, uh, highlighting kind of the big ones and just say, hey, you know, these are the big goal issues. We are interested in, in funding those and bring us back some ideas on that, kind of in, not to drill down one by one, but as an example, we went through the first two and we kind of know those are getting there. Um, but, you know, it, it left us with goal number three and goal number four you know, we've got some significant priorities and goals there. I think one of them that we talked about with was, and just as an example, um, update and integrate by 2017. So if that's a commitment, I would think that there would be some pretty hefty prioritization um, this year and the next and the following years on that particular goal if we're going to make it by 2017. So those, those are just some of the comments I has made. Um, well, uh, no. Before I turn it over to Mr. Buckingham, I guess that's, that's my thought here is, and what I just heard, I think, from uh, these questions are kind of the, uh, everything else that's not, that hasn't made this or for the, generally that hasn't made this list of 26 questions is assume that, hey, we're expecting that to be done. These are more nuanced or perhaps some, in some cases more, more expensive or kind of seen as extras that staff's trying to wade through and yeah. understand like just how focused are we on these uh, if it didn't make this list I think I just heard Dave say you know we're, it's coming down to where we put it in our prioritiz prioritization on the goals but uh, we can let Dave so go I'd, for it. I'd say generally that is true although there may well be things that aren't on here that are a super high priority that that for one reason or another didn't stick on there for example I'm not sure we put general plan, local coastal plan on this list, probably because I got to it and said, we all know that's super high. <laughs> um, yeah. But but if I may, maybe I, if I was smart enough before we came in here, I would have recommended this, but I'll try it now. Perhaps just starting down this list and just a general bin, is this a number one priority, a number two priority, a number three priority? Not a vote, just some general discussion. I think it would be helpful to us just to hear, you know, how important is, is it um, do, do you sense that an IT strategic plan for the city is, or or uh, or code enforcement? How important, you know, at the, at this point, funding code enforcement? How important is that? You know, is that a, is that something the number one that you really, really, really think we should do this year, or is that a number two that it would be great to be able to do that, or is that a number three that sort of do that if you if we got enough money to do it this year? That maybe that would is a is an approach. Christine. Just briefly, so we can actually, I think we really do want to get started talking about the budget. Um, so I look, and as I'm looking at the goals and I'm looking at the guidance that we received in the staff report, I honestly, I think if we just go through the goals, then we will, these will come out. They're, they're in the goals. So I would just suggest we just look at the goals and go quickly through. There aren't really that many, and we just start there. Because that, that is what we're trying to fund, the goals. Just, just that's, that's where I think we should go use the goals document, not use these 26 questions. And, Unless and, we don't and, get through them and then our staff yeah. would say, hey, let's pull that question in this because it's in this goal. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah I, I do. And I think um, we do have, an, uh, we have an, uh, another opportunity from this to kind of refine it on the, our next workshop once we get through this as well. So, I mean, considering, you know, the, the, how much time we have, I, I agree we can just get through the goal issues rather than the, the 26 line items. Is my thought is that that's that's kind right, of my assumption is the twenty six items are coming from the goals right so we're, we'll probably hit them and if we haven't if they're highlighted and we didn't get to them then staff will say hey go back to this one like for example the bike issue that's actually in goal two e I know but we said we weren't going to look at goal two but I just want to point out to us all that 
the bike needs is in actual goal two yeah. under E. And, and just, if I may, as a comment with that, what I heard um, Mr. Buckingham say was that these 26 items weren't necessarily strategically planned to be pulled out as the items we had to look at. It was just part of a beginning of a thinking process. And so there is no special issue with regard to this being the list that has to be attacked. Uh, correct? I mean, yeah. Okay. Ms. Layton? Thanks. Thank you very much. We need, um, we need buttons up here, too. <laughs> yeah, really, so we can Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> One thing that I hope that you'll take into consideration, too, is how you want the budget to look. And so since you've all been around for a little while, Noah's thrown a couple of things at me that I've added to the budget. You may want extra line items on the budget presented. In particular, you've been interested in contract expenditures, so maybe you want me to separate that out and have personnel expenses, services, contract expenditures, other, you know, anything that you want me to change like that. Just let me know what you'd like to see either, you know, added or maybe there's something in there that you don't like and you want it reformatted. I'd really like I'd really like that kind of feedback as well because I'm open to whatever you want. I'm I'm not married to the budget the way it looks. It can okay. always be changed. Great, thank you, Susan. I think I have some notes from the last budget um, to, to to submit as well, so that's good. So um, so with, with that, I mean, we we just kind of we just talked about kind of the overall lay, just going through, you know. One through ten, really, and one through nine, and 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 get through these. Um, uh, goal two, we we talked about measure Q, kind of addressing those. Um, goal three is is a, a a good one to start at. I, I do have some questions when I look at that because I, when I look at the secondary unit and sign ordinance and neighborhood design, seems like that's kind of something that's already there in in, in our budget that we've been you know from a, a day to day um, you know kind of operating. Thing we've been going about, not necessarily something that we, you know, need help outside help with. That, that's correct. Um, those are efforts that are ongoing at the staff level and don't require any additional funds other than basically what you're yeah. paying for me to be here. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that, that, that's that's a great example of, of what we tried to pull out was we did we didn't put on the list of of, the, of this list things that needed staff time only. So I'm going to prioritize our staff time based on the goals and objectives you've given us. What I'm looking for is prioritizing the dollars and the budget. So, so we're going to get the sign ordinance done and those other things done. They don't cost any extra money except for staff time, and they're not going to be part of the budget process. They're a part of a separate prioritization process that we'll go through. But So I, I wouldn't spend any time talking about anything that costs staff time only. So as an example, if we're looking at the general plan and LCP and the downtown specific plan, it, it's on there. I, I don't think it's necessarily we have to talk about a number. We just have to talk about, uh, obviously, it is a priority. And if we're, we're talking about coming and get, completing in 2017, in the budget process, we have to have some sort of thought in how much is it going to take this year to get started. And, you know, do we start the downtown specific plan this year, too? Or is that something that you know, is presented on, yeah, we may get it this year, but maybe it's next year type of conversation. Those are just some of the talking points as we go through, you know, prioritizing and, and getting, um, uh, prioritizing how much funds we might put into this particular goal. It, that's, that's good. Um, I, I would say the general plan, we, on the 24th, uh, you're gonna, we're gonna look at the plan for the plan. Um, included in that, in t in the entirety of that discussion is what it's going to cost, high and lows, uh, what is our funding deficit um, to achieve the goal? Um, there is one. Uh, it's fairly significant um, and is going to be a moving target as we pursue additional grant opportunities moving forward. You're going to see all that on the 24th. Um, and so I would not spend a lot of time debating about how much money we should allocate today not, for the general yep, plan because yep. I'm going to give you numbers and we're going to talk about options on the 24th, so it would just be redundant. Okay. And, I, and you need to see it to have a good conversation about it, and so you don't have that. I would suggest holding off on that piece until the 24th. Okay. Any other comments? Goal number four? No? Um, just briefly on that one, um, 
uh, knowing there is still some residual Dynegy funds available and you know, that we should look at those as one-time funds, I, I would consider the general plan update an a important and potential place to utilize those funds knowing how much it would mean for the future of the community. Great. Any other comments? And well, with that, with what Scott's saying, goal number three then being that in a couple of weeks we're going to be starting with this in terms of priority, that is in process. So we should not, we're done with it. We pretty much talked about that. Yeah, you'll get to have a comprehensive discussion about it. Uh, right so, now, yeah. It's already a goal. So. Yeah. Christine? I agree with Noah. We've been talking about the GP and LCP update. I agree. It is a one time, up, I mean, it's a one time in many, many years. I would definitely look to the Dynagy funds for that. I agree. Cool. A portion, for sure. Mm hmm. Any other comments? Are we are we fine there? Do you want to go on to goal four? Any other conversations um, from this standpoint? Sure. Um, just to not get too far ahead, but uh, under the 2B traffic management plan, there is this question. It's the first one on the other list uh, about five traffic safety calming measures. And yes. I'm not sure if Mr. Lavick really wanted us to come up with specific uh, areas, but I did spend a little time thinking about what we've been hearing a lot about. And if I, if I could, I, the ones that I think we've heard the most about are Maine and 41, I'm assuming, San Jacinto and Maine, Del Mar, uh, tra traffic calming and safety. And then uh, we, have, we had Quintana and Maine. The other two that I think are still out there are Radcliffe and Maine. And then uh, there was recently um, Pacific and Maine. And then we have the ongoing request on Easter. So I, I saw, as far as high, high priority um, things that I think we're working on already, Maine and 41, San Jacinto and Maine, and then the Del Mar traffic calming project. To me, those seem to rise to the top, and then those others are also important, but um, I think it'd be hard to say which one would be more significant than, than another of those remaining. No, can you cl clarify Del Mar? The Del Mar is the um, base uh, focused on Del Mar Elementary, uh, the school district, okay. and um, the neighborhood working on some traffic calming for mostly school-based traffic. And then clarify Easter, if you could. Yes, um, Easter has, there's, we've received requests about some form of traffic calming down Easter as you exit Highway 1. Got it. Under, yep, thank you. Or enter, uh, yeah, e either way, I guess. Yeah, it's happening both ways, as many of these are. Radcliffe, obviously, we've heard quite a bit about Radcliffe and Maine, and, um, you know, there's ongoing work there. And um, then Pacific has recently come up, and that's going to be going to the Public Works Advisory Board again, I believe. Is that the conclusion on that one? No, they made conclusions and uh, recommendations to council um, to try to, the recommendations were to try a few things um, and uh, bring those recommendations to, to council. That's right, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> any other comments on that? Um, one thing, and I know, Rob, in terms of the pavement management index and the pavement management plan in terms of prioritizing these numbers, I think it was last year or the year before we came up with, like, a one-year, five-year, ten-year plan in terms of can that prioritization of those streets be manipulated also or maybe being a case in point, Radcliffe and Maine being that the BMX park is moving ahead. That's going to be a big one. And so I think in that uh, uh, pavement management index when we prioritized it, I don't know how close to the top it was. So could that plan be um, part of this process to be manipulated to update it? Um, well, we're talking about kind of two different, a little bit two different things. There's the, the traffic issue and then the street repair work. So actually, you'll see some street repair at Radcliffe and Maine in the next week or so. That's uh, one of the intersections that are in the current project that we're going to be working on. So, But if, if there are, th th it's exactly what I'm looking for. If there are areas out there that you or the public think deserve particular attention that, that and maybe they're low on the scientific pavement management index, but for some other cultural reason, we think they're important. That's what we're interested in hearing. One more question on the 
uh, payment management plan, there's comment this year that we would be going into a two-year cycle on that. So um, instead of an annual cycle, do you want to talk about that? Well, quickly? that's correct. Um, we're finding with the limited funds that we have that going out to bid every year, we're not getting our best prices. And they're too small a quantities to really uh, seek the benefits of, of a payment management project. So um, we are likely to skip next, next year with a major project. Next year or this coming fiscal this year? This coming fiscal year. Okay, thank you. And then take a project out the following uh, fiscal year that combines the funds from both those. So um, we'll be uh, not that, having... That's, it's execution, not budgeting. So we will still likely budget for that so that we don't spend that money on something else so that we have it in order to execute double with it in two years. Great. Thanks. Any other comments? If I may briefly on the traffic control measures, I do think that there's a great deal of progress that probably isn't going to cost too much money on the Del Mar projects. It's pretty citizen-based and gra grassroots, so I don't think that's a big a commitment on the city side. I think Easter Street uh, neighborhood meetings and some very easy fit, you know, some solutions there could be found by just meeting with the with the neighbors and talking to them and trying something there. But I do think Maine and 41 and San Jacinto and Maine, I think those are bottlenecks that every single person pretty much every week goes through. And I think they may take a bit more study and a bit more staff and may, maybe resources that are currently not available. But I, I think the Del Mar projects the Easter Project, the Pacific and Maine, these things are probably within our current structure. Radcliffe and Maine may also be one that we need to spend additional dollars on as soon as the park comes there. So the, the, uh, the that traffic, happen. just help us differentiate between traffic calming and traffic management. The, goal, the objective says implement five specific traffic calming things. That's exactly like Del Mar. That could be Easter. A bottleneck at Radcliffe is already hey, calmed. <laughs> Pardon me. I just want to ask you a question before you leave. Sorry. The, the, the bottleneck at Radcliffe is is calming. It's already calm. That's why it's a bottleneck. It needs traffic management. But so what I was sort of fishing for there is if there are other places around the city where the sense of the city is some traffic calming efforts, that that's what the, the this objective says is traffic calming. So uh, sort of like the street mural. Um, and uh, or other areas where we're cons where it would be wise to do some moderate investment to calm traffic. That would be great to know. Okay, so Delmar calming, Easter calming, Pacific and Maine calming, and I would suggest Embarcadero crosswalks if you're looking for calming. And they could be murals, but certainly that's something to think about down there. Oh, one more thing. What about, excuse me, pardon me. Speaking of calming, we haven't discussed it. I'm pretty sure it's in the plan, and I'm sorry if I don't have it memorized, but the cross for where the Embarcadero Road at Coleman Park, where the new bike bridge is going to dump people on, that's already taken care of in the planning. For That's a cross that will be much busier now as people go back and forth to the bridge. There will be a crosswalk there. Um but there's not much in the project that deals with traffic calming um, per se um, there. So it may be to include that in the Embarcadero as one of the intersections that- I would uh, for sure, yes, yeah. Because there's kind of a hump there you can't quite see. Okay, thanks. Can, can, you, can you elaborate a little bit more about that? I wasn't Oh, quite, sure. You know, yeah. where, where the, when you're coming south after you cross the bike bridge, mm -hmm. the bike and pedestrian bridge, and, mm -hmm. you're, and you're either biking or walking south, then you have to cross Embarcadero Road. And it's a little tricky. And the cars speed because they're not used to just going to the rock or coming back from the rock. Mm -hmm. So there's a big hump of sand here and a big hump of sand sort of over mm -hmm. here. So you can't quite see. The visibility is not 100%. Mm -hmm. And right now, it's not that big of a deal. But once that bridge is completed, they'll, you'll, I think that will increase traffic. So we don't even have a crosswalk. I don't think there's even a crosswalk there now because it's a street. It's not anything people are walking on normally. There will be crosswalk with the project mm -hmm. and um, some grading on the north side um, with getting the bike path in there so that hump, that sand dune will probably not be there in that location. Okay. Well, I'm not going to tell anybody about that. 
moving sand. But I would just say that that's an area that I would put on my calming list. Perfect. No, I that, mean no, it was approved that, by that Coastal. Is, that is okay. that is perfect visioning. That's exactly what what we're looking for here. Is that that's somebody is seeing a problem before it becomes a problem, and we might be able, it might be a good one to stick some money against. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So that led me to a question, but I, I remember we had a brief discussion in our pavement management plan, and part, part of it part of it was maintenance. So I think it's in the goals. Um, it basically just kind of a management on restriping, whether or not it would be parking um, lanes, um, particularly crosswalks. I know that was one of the discussions, uh, primarily in the school districts and then in the business districts. So we're pretty covered on that, would you say? Yes, we are. And you'll see, um, we'll copy council on a letter that's going out in the downtown area. Okay. In the next week or so, we're going to um, start refreshing some striping um, starting in the kind of the core of the downtown and are okay. radiating outward. Um, but what, what I so in the objectives is restriping of all crosswalks, um, legends, uh, some curbs, and other things. It says all of a specific of several specific types across the whole city. That sound. I I just heard one council member ask a question about that. It sounds like that is something that that the council thinks that is maybe in, you know, bin two approaching bin one to, for, for, to make sure that we get funded this year? Well, my understanding of uh, part of that was that um, developing basically a kind of a maintenance program, and it doesn't mean that we're going to stripe all of our streets all at once, but it just meant, hey, part of that was we're developing a maintenance program, so we, you know, identify areas and we're just kind of ongoing enhancing those things. I, I, that's what I took as part of um, part of the goals and part of the conversation on that. that. That's all. I just, one question led to another. And we're going to try to do that, okay. or starting that at least with staff internal with the maintenance okay. section, so that, that will be a lower, much okay. lower cost than contracting. Um, would, just to kind of sidestep, um, would, if council would so allow, there, I just wanted to ask uh, Brent uh, a question in regard to the visitor center, if that would be okay. I know he made a couple comments and I know he's, he was walking out so I just wanted to uh, Brent I, I know you you made a comment um, thanks for coming up yeah, about no the visitor about the visitor center um, to, to support that and last year during the um, budget cycle there was the comment that um, kind of a plan to make that self-funding so you know how to how is that progressing um, we are talking about that uh, with my board. Um, we just had a strategic planning session. Um, we have some new board members um, on the TBID as well as the Bureau. We are looking at um, some structures. I happen to have uh, uh, connected with some other cities that uh, their bureaus actually run visitor centers, and, and I'm getting some of their ideas on how they're actually funding as well. We were looking at uh, trying to help with some of the funding mechanism for the visitor center through ticket sales that unfortunately um, it hasn't been as successful um, be, and we're looking actually at other uh, forms of how we can do ticketing in the future. Um, we're just seeing a lot of additional fees and so a lot of the attractions here and businesses don't want to um, be on our ticketing system because of, of cost, but we are looking at other areas and how we can uh, specifically fund the visitor center. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. Do you think you'll have something for the city as far as a plan on that, or is that still in development? It's still in development um, only because we've had a lot of uh, board members actually go off the board, and we have very, very new people on our board, and so we definitely want to continue with the conversations and hopefully by the end of this year we'll have some plans um, on what we can look at for future funding um, in the future for this next fiscal it's going to be a little bit difficult for us to like have a you know full fleshed out plan as far as like uh, for funding so we're hoping again that the city uh, will be able to help fund the visitor center for this next year and we'll continue working on some plans for it becoming more self-sufficient Thanks, Brent. Any questions for Brent? No. Thank, thanks okay. for coming up. Thank you. Thanks for letting oh, me catch Oh, no problem. I, just, I have another meeting in Atascadero at 6. All right. So. Thanks. Thank thanks you, guys. Okay. Very positive. Thank, thanks for that, you guys. Um, with that, we'll turn it back to um, where we left off. And um, did we complete goal two and goal three? Are we pretty much there? 
I feel we could go to four. Okay. That's okay. just me. Cool. Yeah. Goal, goal number four. I do um, not to not to belabor this too much, but you know, I'm reading traffic management plan. I'm, I'm we're endorsing the idea of coming up with a neighborhood traffic management concept and and process, and then we're talking about five traffic safety and or calming measures. So. Um, we didn't just pull San Jacinto and Maine and um, Highway 41 and Maine off. That's obviously there. We're talking about more subtle projects. Okay. Um, I, I think I think San Jacinto is going to need a little more um, effort and focus. The Del Mar project that is being worked on by the grassroots group is going to hopefully touch San Jacinto, but I'm thinking that needs to be on there because it is such a speedway, and uh, we did, I didn't we didn't list that one specifically. And for calming or for I thought, traffic calming? Yeah, yes. Wasn't there a? Is it possible to calm San Jacinto, or isn't that more of a management? I was going to say something funny, but I won't because it's not really that funny. Um, <laughs> there's nothing calm about uh, San Jacinto. <laughs> no. um, right at the intersection with with Highway One, Alder, Maine. It's a difficult area to. Uh, work with some of the traditional calming methodologies as you work your way up the street um, I think not to get so much in the weeds because uh, I can feel Dave staring me down we don't have much time left <laughs> but it's an awful wide section of pavement there and gives you the feeling that you can drive a hundred miles an hour so um, the intersection is difficult. As you move up the street, you can move, use more traditional calming type techniques. I, I would like to say, though, I think that there, I don't know, I think it would be a big, a big change if it was no right on red. And maybe it's no right on red at certain hours. Who it, but is that management? Is that calming? And is that the city or is that Caltrans? That is Caltrans um, in concert with the city. Okay. And it's free. Caltrans. Right. No, I understand. I understand. No, I, I understand. I mean, I think there's issues all the way up the street. Every single block is an issue. So, Noah, did you feel like it was... Because I feel like this, the, the biggest issue, the issue that kicks off all the other issues is Highway 1 that and the light and the intersection and all of that. And then it gets just worse as you go to Maine. It's, it's Highway 1, Maine, and Alder, and then Birch. Are intense, I, I, but you want to skip over San that. San Jacinto needs traffic calming. I don't want to get into the details on yeah. how we're going to calm that traffic, but I do think it needs to be on the list. And if I might, just to maybe help uh, end this discussion on traffic calming and traffic management, the whole purpose behind a neighborhood traffic management plan is to develop that toolbox for traffic calming techniques that you would use that work for a specific neighborhood because everything doesn't work everywhere. And uh, so it gives the neighborhood tools to kind of work themselves and come up with ways that will work for them. Um, I've seen this in other cities where um, so um, sp while speed humps may work in some streets, they don't work everywhere. Maybe you want to have friction, you know, basically narrowing the look of the pavement. Uh, you know, green bike lanes give that narrowing look. That might be an approach on some streets where um, speed humps might be approach on other streets. Okay. So in, in some, though, we're looking at a parking management plan, and as that comes back, it, we not, might not budget all of this in one year, right? I mean, I think that's, that's one flexibility we'll have on this. Um, okay. Anything else? I would be willing to put it on the calming list, yes, San Jacinto, if you wanted to put it on the calming list. Okay. I, th I think Bob wants to say something, but I'm assuming it, it took ask. Um, I, we're kind of doing free form here on other public comments, so you're asking, Bob wants to come up and make some comments on this as well. Bob? So we're going a little loosey-goosey on our, uh, our workshop here. Yeah, Bob Kellermore Bay. I'll make it quick. Uh, Rob knows and everybody else knows that my priority for this uh, traffic control to update our traffic pattern to make it safe traffic for Maine and Radcliffe, I get a lot of pressure from the hill. They want me to represent the hill because we have a bike park there and uh, we have traffic from Maine to Radcliffe to Littlemore Creek Road. We have on and off traffic from Highway 1 
And that place gets very congested, especially uh, tourist time, holiday time. And I would just like to make this priority one, because uh, especially since we have the bike park there, and I'm for the bike park, but we have to update this traffic control problem, and we should put it on our budget. I'm just going to, as, as best we can. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. If I could just follow up briefly on that. Uh, I, th I think uh, we have some traffic calming that's actually going to be implemented there uh, on Main, and that's the, main, that's the bigger issue is the speeding on Main. It's not as much the calming that happens with people trying to exit um, Radcliffe and get onto Main, but it's actual needing to calm and slow traffic on Main Street. Mr. Leivik's already working on that, but I think I agree with uh, Bob. We need to con continue that effort. Great. Anything else? Okay, can we move on past goal number two? Are we, are we okay on, on everything, on all the comments so far? Okay, thanks. Um, goal number three, we're pretty clear on that. We cruised through that. Any other comments on goal three? Seeing none. Um, goal four, I, I know we didn't say much about downtown specific plan, but um, you know, do you need any comments on that? I, I don't think so. It'll be, I mean, we internally, at least in the near future, we have to go through it, <laughs> take a look at the information that we have and kind of condense okay. that. There won't be a lot of, you, okay. you know, funding necessary up front because there's gonna, there has to be some internal work done on that okay. document. All right, great. Uh, goal number four, um, comments on that. Uh, I think one of the one line items on there was code enforcement and for us to maybe consider um, that as part of the budget. As one one item I got on that. Um, any other comments? John, Noah, Noah. Um, I just have a question. I, I think um, the questions that were brought up by Mr. Taylor regarding the fire department and um, quality of service and so forth, um, responsiveness to North Morro Bay. I'm I'm kind of guessing that part of that could be addressed within the strategic plan that's suggested on as item I, because there's a lot of moving parts there, and each one of those individually, uh, some could could be really expensive, and others might be, you know, a more modest but um, elegant solution for things that we've been wrestling with for quite a while. So, uh, am I correct in that? Is that um, the strategic plan? It's talking about how to improve organizational efficiency improve quality of service. Are, are the things that Mr. Taylor brought up specifically going to be considered in that, and we'll be seeing a presentation on those? Th that's where they would, f well, he brought up four things. That's where most of them would fall if they fell anywhere. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I heard maintain paramedic service or look to improve it. That one might fit in the, under, the other obje under the objective of health care. Um, but the, re the rest of them are essential, would essentially be strategic things, um, and frankly, they're super high cost things. Want to open a new fire station north of Morrow Bay? Um, or fire department staffing? Um, so so th those are not, those other three were not identified as key objectives for this year under our goal. Um, doesn't mean we're not going to. Steve and I don't work with those things routinely, <laughs> um, but uh, but I uh, I appreciate the comment. But since there, in, unless you tell us to bring you a plan that allows us to open the North Morro Bay Fire Station or something else, I don't intend to do that because that was not one of the goals or objectives you laid out for us. Yeah, and I, and I think um, all I wanted to point out was or just uh, confirm is that within the strategic plan. We have, we have a new leadership team in some ways within the fire department. As they're looking at the bigger picture, I'm, I'm confident they're going to look at all of those things that the community would like to see, but are there new ways for us to address those? So I, I think those aren't going to be dismissed, just to make sure Keith knows we're not just saying, no, we don't, we don't think those are important things for us to be able to achieve, but ultimately those are going to be looked at and it'll, it'll have to be realistic about what we can afford. John. Um, you know, I would, and I appreciate uh, Keith's input. I, I, I listened and I wrote down the four comments. Uh, one thing I would want to know is, um, do we have a problem with response times? Right. And so before something goes into a strategic plan, is there really an issue? 
um, rather than anecdotal information and or um, I'm not sure what strive to improve paramedic service really means. Um, do we have a problem with service? What are the issues? Um, uh, and firefighters and maintaining appropriate equipment. I mean, it, I'm not sure of the definition of what it is. So maybe that gets flushed out and maybe that's what Noah's talking about in the strategic uh, aspect of things. Thanks. Yeah, I, I think I wanted to comment on that probably for the council as a whole and, and even staff just to make sure that it didn't appear that we just blew those things off because th we've been hearing those for long long before I was on the council even. Uh, so you know, I think it was important to recognize we're always looking at ways to address this. It's just how much can we afford at this time. Great. No, thanks. I, I did not hear, I heard one comment about code enforcement. Are we leaving that one? No. I'm, I'm just okay. Matt? <laughs> um, wow, well, thanks, Dave, for baiting that question. That's exactly what I was going to ask about or comment about was code enforcement, um, especially um, Chief Christie, in my time being involved with this, she has been, I like the way that she's been expressing her proactive rather than reactive stance in dealing with various um, code enforcement in town. And knowing that the budget and, and staffing for the, our police is um, not necessarily problematic, but it's year by year and it's an expensive endeavor, um, I'd like, um, I, I would like to see and prioritize that the court for bringing this proposal for a proactive court enforcement and having her explain that and putting it in place, I think that's a, a, a big priority. Okay, uh, I think code enforcement is something that we almost budgeted for last time around, but we did, or mid-year, I think it was, it came up, and there was a lot of support. We were part-time at that point, wasn't it? And we didn't do it, but so we did have that discussion, and we did have, hear about it from the community as well. I, I find that code enforcement is part of a lot of our beautification issues, our parking issues that we are finding out may exist in certain parts of town, certainly people do tend to park longer than two hours in the green zone. And I personally, very rarely have I had received a complaint about someone getting um, a, you know, a ticket for parking too long in a green zone. I haven't received one myself when that's, I've parked too long. That's because nobody's received zone. one. Yeah. Right. So a lot of the things that we're dealing with in the community that are issues do stem from code enforcement. People can't see at an intersection to, they need a stop sign because they can't, you know, because people are flying both ways. Well, perhaps sometimes we find out it's just they can't see well enough to proceed. So I would like to see staff come back with a code enforcement suggestion and a, and a budget for that that would encompass not just the parking and anything that would be directly in the police department, but it would also be over in, in public works or community development, wherever those things lie. And I, I mean, I, but what I would say is if we're going to do it, we have to roll it out with a lot of fanfare. So I think we can learn from our business license audit experience that when you go from zero to 65, to use your, continue on with your analogy on, on the road rules, I think that if we're going from zero enforcement to enforcement, I would expect that we would have super outgoing uh, public education about that and what it means and giving people some sort of time to get some things done in terms of looking at things in people's residences or their businesses. So I do encourage us to take a look at it. Okay. And then I also question about body worn cameras. If that would be something that measure Q may or may not pick up. It would certainly be eligible for measure Q funding. Okay. And, and then just, it's a camera that, it, I see this now in other places. So just talked about that a little bit. Okay, body-worn cameras are, are all in the press right now because there's lots of stuff going on nationwide. And in fact, the department designated some of our COPS funding in our last budget. Um, some of the things that I've been looking at is our policy and implementation and the different things that would impact us to make sure we also buy the right equipment. Um, but there is another funding source that might materialize um, in the next month or so, and that's something that the chiefs in San Luis Obispo County get from the state from the uh, BSCC, which is the Board of Standards Community Corrections, and it has to do with realignment. So it's all of these monies are to help us with frontline law enforcement. So I do see the need, and I know that it's very beneficial to help 
us do our job better, to assess how we do our job better. And um, we've been working on the policies and a presentation for council when we're ready to purchase what we need. So, But I also think the funding I can find elsewhere. I'd love some Measure Q funding, but I have done some work to find funding in other ways. Okay, great, thanks. And then I would just support um, the strategic planning for both the police and the fire. And I don't know if that would be... I don't know what the anticipation of is for funding for that or if that's something that can be done with current in-house funding. I was just kind of curious if it would be a consultant study or something you would do. Yes, if that's fine. Strategic planning can be done in-house, and it would require working with staff and just developing our needs assessment internally as well as setting our path for the next several years. So I do believe it's something that the police department can do in-house. Go ahead there, fire department. We actually currently are in the process in-house, have been for six months and estimate another six to eight months before that process is completed. Okay, great, that would be all for me on four, thanks. Okay, any other comments then? Yeah, I would echo what Christine and uh, what Matt both said um, with regard to code enforcement. I think there's an intangible return on investment that cannot be calculated, but I think it's there I also absolutely agree that um, um, uh, going from zero to 200 um, initially in year one is not a good idea. So I just wanted to echo um, that and the the significant need in many areas for it. Great comments. I I guess I would suspect that, you know, based on that, you know, if code enforcement, you know, comes back and we're going through that based on the comments, that type of outreach, we might have come to council as well okay and don't need to comment on it now but as you have the opportunity um i'd enjoy talking with you about where you see the most emphasis needed um so if you don't count parking as a police function then if you were to ask me right now i would put code enforcement and community development more in the building planning area with uh, bringing in police when it's a law issue, a legal issue. Um, but so I didn't, I, we don't have to spend that time now, but if your sense is that you see a whole lot of police enforcement, then, uh, then that would be helpful for me to, to know. I, I think I, I would respond to the comments as far as being community development. I think, you know, obviously we spend, at least my observation is we spend a lot of time and effort in under code enforcement and we don't have a code enforcement um, officer, if you want to call it that. So, um, well, Most uh, of the code enforcement cases that we get are related to things that are in our zoning code. Um, so and this is actually something that I've done before, um, rolled out a part-time basis code enforcement uh, when I was with the city of Pismo Beach. Um, it was pretty successful until we, you know, hit the situation where the, recession hit and we had to tighten the belt and that was which is what happened in more bay years ago as well yeah i mean so, that's not and, an and uncommon it, and it circles thing. back yeah yeah so thank you thanks i do want to uh, make a comment about code enforcement i think um i, I agree exactly how mr buckingham just put it as far as uh wh- where it would fit and and i i think the parking side is, is really important but uh, when we start talking about code enforcement in the neighborhoods that haven't had any code enforcement in uh, many many years and you look around at how many boats RVs trailers are throughout the neighborhoods if we go from complaint driven code enforcement in the neighborhoods to something like what we used to have you're gonna have riots so I'm just tempering the enthusiasm about a full-time code enforcement officer for residential as a component duly noted okay that's part of it Um, Goal number five, um, ensure fiscal sustainability. Um, Just to to kick that off, one quick comment. We've got management partners on here. It's currently funded, um, but we have it folded on this list of goals for this coming budget year. So any comments to that? I mean, we're, we're funding the management partners report through this fiscal budget, correct? Yes, the, the question will be um, on their multitude of recommendations, the ones that cost money, by save money, which are the ones that we want to do something about. Okay. 
So I think in, in the, the, the objective, if I recall, says we will bring to the council for approval all management partner recommendations that are not, that, that I keep, don't implement myself without having your, your, uh, your um, approval to do so. But so some of those are going to cost money. As you, I mean, as you saw in my, uh, yeah, we'll go, won't go there right now. Okay, thank you. Anybody want to start us off on this? John? Sure. Uh, these would be more um, macro uh, kinds of comments that might fit with regard to the budget process and process um, improvement opportunities. Um, one, um, it's, I do think I recall that we do not do zero-based budgeting. However, that would be something that maybe you might look at. We do do that now. We've implemented zero-based budgeting. Okay, good. So strike it off my list and as a possibility. Uh, two, that, uh, just the notion from a policy standpoint that, that um, um, enterprises should be self-funding and interdepartmental transfers really, I think we should really look closely at those and, and uh, watch those from a, a fiscal responsibility standpoint and sustainability standpoint. Uh, three, um, uh, with regard to uh, that same topic, um, uh, looking at previously taboo or unidentified revenue sources, um, such as the mass um, um, audit that was done, um, there may have been those areas where um, for 20 years or so um, there was possibility of low-hanging fruit and there might be a number of other areas. I would sure like to see those, if they're there, discover them and get them um, into the budget if possible. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about was potential for developing policy uh, and recommendation from management uh, for us to consider that might be helpful in uh, improving the financial sustainability of the city. For instance, uh, just as an example, the goal regarding um, how much we should accumulate um, in our risk management fund, is it adequate for the future? Um, just as an example of some policies that might be considered for sustainability, I want to make sure we look at that, um, if at all possible. And um, I think with, uh, with regard to um, um, management partners, um, I, I would concur that that uh, report, which I've not seen yet, um, we're going to have to uh, uh, probably um, prioritize as best we can because my sense will be there's going to be a lot of stuff coming out of there that is a potential and we have limited resources to implement that and so um, once again those that are most, most manageable and have the highest return on investment um, would be um, something that would be important. So thanks. Yeah, I agree with John's comments and uh, also want to thank uh, Dave for making the adjustment with management partners where it seemed like they had uh, dismissed a lot, many of the things that were recommended in the previous report but un un unimplemented and that you've asked them to really include those and then look forward and I think that's going to help us come up with a better report in the end. Great. Matt? The number one under goal five that um, I think prioritization is the budget process um, in terms of um, as it reads developing the one, two, and then five-year outlook. I think these other ones, um, these are kind of the um, minutia that will fit into that. The energy, um, the vehicle listing, um, management partners, as John is saying, um, that they're going to help drive this instruction. And so, but I think number one priority is the budget process. Thanks, Christine. Hi, I'm cross-referencing our goals with the list of questions in the staff report, and I see one that says, what renewable energy slash energy-saving projects are important? Is that to be discussed here or later? That could be done now. Well, I would think anything that reduces our energy cost would be something we'd want to talk about and then you know, consider if there are things like that to be brought forward. I'm sure we'd want to take a look at them. And then capital replacement under goal five, letter C. If, once we establish the capital replacement accounts, then we'll have to do a minimum contribution. So that will be something we're going to see coming forward and that may really impact then some other, since we're, we don't have this in a robust way, I would expect that we'll see some dollars put toward that that may be surprising to us. 
So what, I, would I you see, estimate? So I was this just is great. I hear some. So this this is a budget thing or something in this category that actually costs money. This budget. Um, mm -hmm. So and I see some nods up on the dais that that says um, yes. We want you to budget to at least start budgeting a moderate amount for capital replacement. So if our entire capital replacement budget should be seven hundred thousand dollars a year, um, maybe we start at seventy thousand this year. But at least we do something that is more than that just a head nod. We're never going to be able to get the whole thing, but I see lots of nods. So this is exactly what I'm looking for. Now I can bring you a first round budget that says. Here's all the capital replacement monies, yes. and we're not going to spend them on anything else. <laughs> or yes, you, you, you're going to get to see. choose whether or not to, but, but okay, so that's Yeah, is it could be some different levels yeah. what we could do in the capital replacement. What are the most critical areas of capital replacement? Things that are most likely to go bad first, if, if there's even any way to know. But then just sort of give us maybe one or two options for that so we can see where that money could go longer term. So that's, that's what I have from goal five. Thanks. And it seems like you understand. And if I, if I could make a one minute advertisement on goal five. So uh, am amazing enough, we discovered this, well, I guess we discovered this week that our, your ordinance requires your staff to bring you a master fee schedule every year for full fee recovery. Said, let that sink in. Your ordinance <laughs> law requires us to do that and for many years we've been bringing you a fee schedule for 30 percent fee recovery in planning and building perhaps so uh so we intend to bring you a full fee recovery or a uh, master fee schedule um and also on the 28th of april at our council meeting what i intend to do is bring to you at least the beginnings of a resolution for what you think is the appropriate subsidy from the general fund for different fee areas if you and you set a percentage we want to subsidize five percent of all building planning and impact stuff we want to subsidize 25 percent of all youth programs we want to sub subsidize veterans hall at 80 percent for any nonprofit. but and then we'll bring you a fee schedule that says the fee should be a thousand bucks you've said you want to do a five i have five percent subsidy so the fee for this year is 950 dollars um so that's what we intend to do, and we intend to build this budget, assuming that we um, that we are uh, recovering closer to a significant amount of our fees. Um, and the 28 April will we'll still be in the middle of our well, we'll be late in the budget process, but we're sort of going to guess that that some of those fees are going to come more into line with uh, with reality. So. Um, great discussion. I think the other part of that is, um, as I look at the fee recovery um, issue, it's it's much like some of the other things we've been facing uh, when you consider mass or anything else. These are things we need to um, advertise. Uh, we need to get that out there. Um, uh, it's great great discussion. I think we've the discussion's been out there on what fee recover cost recovery is. Uh, is, as an example in building and planning in our city compared to other cities so um, glad to hear that so um, in this fee recovery would that involve a policy that we that would um, that would kind of fold into that so, yeah I think the, the policy piece of this is the ordinance is, is the policy piece is to what extent exactly. or rate do you want to subsidize various different activities that's okay. the policy question okay. and then it's just math after that it costs us this much you've said that much we do the math and charge whatever x times y is and then i guess the other question is on the capital replacement um, program whether or not um, as you bring that back um, whether or not we need to consider a policy for that or is that just something every year we have to consider are we going to have X amount or are we going to have this amount? Do, do we want to establish some criteria? And, 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 uh, and I guess that would be the question uh, to, to consider, you know, how a policy would fit for that if that's, that's what we're going on. And then finally, there are two other things that um, um, Council Member Heading was, what, was speaking to, and I think we spoke about both of these last year, and that's the Risk Management Fund and General Fund Reserve. Um, 
our risk management fund policy, I, I guess I could, you know, be more specific um, uh, um, about that via, with uh, Ms. Slayton. At, but I, I think that's something that we've had conversations in the past. Our risk management fund at five hundred thousand dollars. You know, re, some of the reviewing that I've done, other cities are at fifty thousand. Um, so, can we review why we are where we're at and and that policy in of itself? I think we've had plenty of discussion on that. Is it a risk management reserve or is it a risk management fund? And once we're over that, you know, does it roll into our, our, our general fund? Kind of some criteria there where it's it's just a little bit more clear. And then the general fund reserve, um, we're at 27.5%. Another one um, I'd just like to revisit is 27.5% adequate. Um, and considering the fluctuation of our our um, budget, if if we're pretty well covered, does it need? Is it simpler just to have um, a flat number for that from a budgeting process? Um, process and then you know as our you know then we'd be able to review that as our general fund grows of course maybe we could reassess whether or not that flat number um, needs to change but I, I'd like to bring back some discussion on those two items and um, those are all the, all the points I had on that any other comments seeing none um, cool John uh, yeah just one and, and it's just the format issue um, and um, maybe some um, opportunities for improvement uh, for some um, more user-friendly uh, reporting. And, and a good example was what Ms. Slayton did um, with regard to the last report that we had um, uh, for the mid-year budget uh, report and the issue that um, was explained in great detail, but the way that you categorized that was different than you had in the past, and it was very helpful. So um, just consideration maybe for um, formatting and what kinds of formats might be more helpful for non-financial managers um, to look at financial things and, and make them more uh, understandable or readable, and that's no disrespect to anybody on the dais whatsoever. So. Just no? to pile on there on the um, formatting, I, I've, I've always really appreciated the notes as, as they're included often, their historical notes. How did we get to this point? Um, so if you find yourself wrestling with, hey, is this worth putting in there, I'd say add, add more detail, particularly knowing um, we have new people at different areas in the city, and I think with the uh, oversight committee as well, um, that should be helpful for them. Okay. Moving on to goal six, um, support economic development. Um, obviously a um, priority, and uh, any comments uh, to my left? John, you want to, or my right, John, right, you want to start? You're right, you're, yeah. Um, yes, I, I think, um, at least from a priority standpoint, a lot of economic activity in the city uh, apparently um, happens in uh, what I consider to be a very disparate fashion in terms of um, some of it occurs here at the chamber level, some occurs with the event team, some occurs with TBID, Tourism Bureau, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I would like management to, to really look at uh, the feasibility, possibility of bringing that closer to home uh, will be my comment. And I know that won't be popular, but um, uh, I would uh, certainly like to consider the possibility of what resource might be appropriate for us to consider that would allow the city to have greater control over um, important economic issues and decisions um, as opposed to having um, input from 12 or 15 different small entities, and I'm not um, uh, I don't want to um, disparage them in any way, uh, those entities in any way, that's not my, my point, but it is difficult to try to gain a full picture and understanding and then have a good sense um, of what uh, the true economic issue might be and what the vision is for uh, economic development in the community. And I think it, it just has to be closer to home. Uh, and so. Um, my sense is that that will uh, require a resource, but the return on investment could be great. Uh, so I wanted to throw that out. 
is uh, so number ten on the uh, on the list here is what priority is a five year economic development strategic plan, which is what we discussed in goals and objectives as sort of a bridge between leap to the future and charting out a plan, and that plan may well. Um, I was going to say make recommendations, maybe validate some of the recommendations that, that I might give already. Um, but so I, I'm interested that, um, that that thing costs some money to do, um, but it it uh, it likely pays some pretty significant investments down the road. But uh, so if any discussion on a five-year economic development strategic plan, and I, I did. I heard the rest of what you said as well, Mr. Heading, and, and that that plan might include talking about how to bring that that uh, control and decision making and influence closer to the heart of the city. The city council um, might be part of what that plan says to do. So um, I guess it's it's difficult um, to do a five year economic strategic plan without a vision and so uh, I would say from a priority standpoint an economic division how excuse me vision um, and how that is developed um, and the development of that could in my mind lend itself to a longer range strategic um, economic development plan um, but things change so rapidly in the world of economic development that um, five years without that well-defined uh, uh, vision is difficult. However, I would support that, yes, longer term. Great, no? Yeah, th thank you. I, uh, I, you know, it's a really tough decision or call because I, I see it as a five-year plan is something that we desperately need. We need to be focused, and it is an investment if it's done well. At the same time, if I have $50,000 that I'm able to put towards a plan, I think I'd be pushing that towards the general plan, the local coastal plan, because in so many ways that will help with economic development and develop that vision and provide a stability for, for, for the community in a way that we haven't been able to um, in many years. So I, um, I think I, I agree with you, Mr. Heading, about how we should be cautious about throwing money at a five-year strategic plan without really um, knowing exactly what we're going to get and how it's going to return to us. Matt? Um, <clears throat> well, sort of to piggyback on what um, we have going on over here, I think the LEAP process is instrumental in terms of driving the next that economic plan five years. And so if we're going to be using LEAP, we want to address that the, and validate what LEAP is showing the city and showing the various um, stakeholders. And then I think when we talked about this economic development plan, that's driving the, uh, um, the impetus for the economic plan. But then it goes along with what um, John is talking about and talking to the various stakeholders on the second page items F and G that we stick with these goals because we're already doing LEAP. And if we drop the ball, and not necessarily drop the ball, but necessarily go full on just into uh, general plan and LCP, then that kind of loses this uh, um, energy that we have going on right now. In, under goal six, we have um, entertained, not necessarily entertained, but um, validated saying, listen, we have stakeholders that need to be involved. So what we need in there in terms of, and that could be underneath the economic development strategic plan, this some sort of coordinator that goes, okay, this is what we're doing. We've done LEAP. We're going to do this with the stakeholders in town. And with that in mind, be it five, um, five years, but looking out at 10 years, because um, in this consultant, um, <clears throat> five years, I agree with what John's saying. It could be too short-sighted. So, but with that, I think we need to stay with these goals. Uh, um, this goal six on these items here is stick with that and, and maybe come up with a way to marry almost everything within this, although the Tri-W property, I think, is further down the list. But definitely B is being driven by A, and then even C, and then um, F and G, and then even the marine services. All of this, I think we, I need, I think we need to stay with this one and uh, go ahead and make that plan. And if, if we're going to use a consultant or use staff, I say we keep doing that. Christine? Okay, great. This is just very exciting because we're talking about budgeting, and this is about revenue. And we're talking about today budgeting for revenue that is existing and static, 
And all of our discussion in goal six is about revenue that we haven't yet tapped into, we haven't yet created. So I think this is one of our most exciting goals because it's the future goal where we can increase our revenues in order to then provide body-worn cameras to incur, you know, to keep our folks safer and just all the things we're talking about, it's because our revenue may fall short that we're unable to do a lot of our things and our goals. So this one, to me, this goal six is the most exciting. I just did quick math. Currently, right now, from the general fund, we're spending well, sorry, $152,000 on activities that fall under economic development. We're spending currently, right now, in this budget, $100,000 on the visitor center, $40,000 on events, and $12,000, I think, is what we uh, gave to the chamber for business support. A leap. Hold on. Hang on, gentlemen. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that's 152. When you add in, I believe it was 49, is what we are paying for the LEAP contract. So add in that 49. Okay, zero. $201,000. And I think that's, for me, when I look at $201,000. So what's the return on that? for us for this year. It's a lot of money going out. And 40,000 of it goes to events. And we don't have anyone coordinating events in a focused way. Um, 100,000 of it goes to the visitor center. And you know, we did hear a little bit that that's not likely to, the request perhaps is not likely going to be less because they're not quite going to come with the presentation, didn't sound like at least general comments from Brent, that they're not coming to us with um, you know, a way to decrease that ask. So then the 12,000 from business support to the chamber, you know, we'll be seeing from them you know, what kind of, how many businesses were started, how many folks did they touch going through that business support program. And then if you look at the $49,000 is providing us with an injection into areas that we haven't had any discussion over at all. It's given us an umbrella to put things under like tree lighting in our downtown core. You know, it turns out because we were talking about it at LEAP, that process may not cost us anything. The meeting we had last week, there were people that are willing to step up and do it. So that's a city expense that's not going to come to the city, but it's going to be an incredible benefit for revitalizing, enhancing things. So I'd like us to think about $200,000 how can we spend it differently, more efficiently? And that's going to be a hard job for the staff to, to figure out for us because how, that's where G, F and G work together and they become really important. How do we spend the funds we've given out so far in a way that brings maximum benefit to the city? I agree with everything everyone has said about the fact that Morro Bay does not have direct connection to our tourism through a staff person. We don't have a direct connection to economic development person because there is no one. So how does the staff see these things coming back to us? But I would suggest that the economic development strategic plan may also be the process that helps us solve some of these challenges. So by going through the process, step one would be creating an economic development vision. That's step one in the process. Um, I have, through the EVC, talked to a few people who've done strategic plans for economic development in our area, including the folks that did the Atascadero plan. And, you know, they're very excited, of course, working for Morro Bay. And that's a, for them, that's raising their revenue. But I think there are ways that we can direct what we want in that RFP that goes out for a strategic plan for economic development. We can say that we want this first, this second, this third. And then perhaps when we have that plan, work with the stakeholders, we'll understand where we need to go and developing some of the internal relationships that we need to have. So for me, I'm willing to spend money in that area because it's bringing revenue into the city for the future. And I would be willing to take some of that dining gym money and think about what portion could we do it here. But we already have that 49000 at least for the LEAP program that we can re-budget for things. So I don't want to le let LEAP hanging, but there really is no future to LEAP unless we bring those initiatives forward. And we haven't, they're not here, so we don't know exactly what will be brought to us, but we're going to find out at the end of March what things will need city funding and how much. So I'm a little long-winded on, winded on this, but I really feel like this is one of those future items that if we don't start doing it now, just like the capital invest, just like putting money in our capital replacement fund, 
this to me is it's our revenue replacement fund. And right now we're depleting it and we're not putting much back in. Great comments, Christine. Um, I was glad to hear the correlation between um, the general plan and LCP as economic development. Um, you know, I think I think it is. It, it it really fundamentally is that tool, and um, it'd be great to see that um, get kicked off. I I, I think everything that um, has been discussed is pretty pretty well highlighted, um, which I would support. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily the time to ask the question, but um, I'll um, ask the question for Dave and or Scott, um, because when we talk about um, the planning software, uh, so there was kind of a question on IT, um, and it, it folds back a little bit, and uh, fiscal sustainability, we talked about fee recovery, but there's also one item in here about funding um, planning software to make things more efficient, which really is kind of an economic development driver too. Um, we're getting projects sooner and and uh, more efficiently. Um, can can you speak a little bit about where you see that? Absolutely. We're, we're doing a couple of things on this side of things, and we're just starting to do them now. But one, obviously, we're looking at our at our fees. As part of that, one of the things that um, I'm looking at doing is um, having a a fee that could pay for the technology on the, and it would be an additional fee that's added to our permitting. Um, it, it makes sense to do that. Those are the those are the the persons receiving the service, and so having them have a little bit of a technology fee that's added on to the building and plan and planning permitting process makes sense and could pay for the system itself. So that's one option. We already are budgeting right now. We have current costs associated with our existing system. Um, it's HD, it's called, its name is HDL. Um, and um, so we have, uh, you know, a budgeted item for, the, for a certain amount that covers the current system. We are looking to go to one that's more robust, offers more features, and has um, some sort of public-facing um, opportunity because our current system does not. And I think that, you know, cuts down on the amount of inquiries that we get. If people like, people like to go online and look stuff up for themselves. That's the world we live in. We don't offer that opportunity to the public, and we should. And that's where most folks are going, and that's what we're looking to do. So, you know, so we do have some existing funds that are available, and we are looking to maybe come up with a, a fee that we, a small fee that we tack on to building and planning permits to account for whatever the future system ends up being in costing. So if I can back up one step and just broaden that, that aperture a little bit. So your IT department is one person. Um, we run Novell GroupWise. Um, we're one of two cities in America that runs Novell GroupWise. I, I'm probably uh, probably underestimating that. I don't. That's not a that's not a statement of fact. Um, we uh, we have no way to um, do business licenses online. Um, we spend a whole lot of staff time uh, looking at checks and working on a on a adding machine to total up the total of those checks for our water bills um, and then put them in the bank. Um, our website was created eight years ago and the six pictures on the top of the website haven't been changed in eight years. Um, I, I could go on. Um, so I would love to, and we have an objective, to sort of fund fundamentally remake our IT um, posture in the city. That's not cheap. So the system Scott was just talking about, I'm just rough in numbers here, 75,000 bucks, 100,000 bucks. An IT strategic plan, actually a professional, a group to help us look at all of these things that I just described, to lay them out over five years, to plunk costs against them and help us determine what the right thing to do at the right time is. 50,000, 75,000, website redesign, 25 grand. Um, business license would hopefully be part of that system. There's, there's some fairly fully functional ones, but, uh, but there's some standalone business license ones. So these are, these are um, from my perspective, A, we're woefully inadequate, and B, it's expensive. Um, and, uh, and so th those two I didn't want to leave here without 
just hearing you, I mean, that is, those are things that pay dividends to customers somewhere down the road, but they're sure they don't pay, they don't, ha they don't look the same as repaving a street. <laughs> um, but, but they are internal things that I think we need. Um, and, uh, so I'm interested to, to hear your sort of thoughts, perspective on that. So having kind of kicked that off um, under this goal six of support economic development, it looks like we've kind of completed that, that item based on this discussion. Um, John's um, signaling me, but I just want to make sure this discussion we're having under IT um, is beyond the scope of this goal number six, and we're, we're starting to move outside that for other discussion. John, did you have a goal number six? Yes, very quickly okay. on uh, economic development. You know, we um, specifically, uh, Mr. Mayor, you and myself have begun um, discussions and are aligned on looking at the um, reuse of the Dynegy property. And I think, uh, in my mind, that's economic development. Mm -hmm. And I, I do believe that there will be some dollars that will be necessary to retain some expertise to assist us in moving that initiative forward. And so I just want to throw that out and make sure that we are including that or considering that as a possibility. And uh, thanks for allowing me to add that. Cool, thanks. I wasn't sure when we're, where, where we were gonna slip that in, but um, based on that conversation, if we just take a short pause and, and grapple with that, um, is there, how would you I, like I, to? I, I heard it. I actually noted it. I think that is a logical place for some portion of the Dynegy payment to be put into a Dynegy redevelopment fund, okay. um, which hires expertise and does some of the work that we need to do in order to move that ball down the field. Great. Thanks. Thank you, John. And so we can conclude that uh, goal six and and we're moving on to goal seven, but is are we into this IT conversation you want to complete right now, Dave? So we've got eight minutes left. Okay. Um, the the IT thing is some is one that I didn't want to leave without hearing about. Um, and economic development plan we talked about thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Um, do let's, you want let's, it? Let's put it there. Where are there any burning issues amongst council that they want to discuss that's that's left on the table amongst the last few goals? Maybe that'd be easy. The yeah. ones that are burning for me are, what do you think about IT? Um, okay. Do you want a great design for the Embarcadero Centennial Stairway link? Um, do you want us to spend money on a new parking management study or uh, do some uh, data and some analysis and see if the current one um, is likely still just as, uh, just as good as, or you know, in the 90 percentile of what it was in 2008? And is an ADA compliance assessment important to you? Okay. So we have IT. Wait, and that's 13, 14, 15, 5, and 6 on the handout. Okay. 13, 14. Okay. Um, any other discussions? So maybe let's, let's wrap up on those particular items that, that right here. I, IT I would support. Um, I think we've, we got a, a great assessment on the community development department. Scott, and um, some of the questions there were how do we support that um, as we adjust any type of things in that department. Um, I think that's one that's critical. And I think the other part of that is kind of moving into the modern era, um, as um, Dave, you were talking about, with as, as um, whether it's website, IT in general for the city. I, I would support that. Any, any other comments to that, left or support right? Support it. Support? Okay. And then the other one was... Um, um, he talked about parking and uh, the Embarcadero Promenade and Old Town Link. I, I think there. Um, I, I would. I think I made some comment last time. Uh, there, all three of those kind of seem to overlap. I don't know if we can revise or the, the existing parking management plan is something that is is suitable to to reuse for that. But um, is there some, how, what kind of direction are we looking at, Christine? I think for the parking management plan, I think a, a refreshing it in house would be my way. To, my goal. And not to throw it away because we haven't done anything on it, and it's been since 2008. We've lost 200 people uh, in our in the last 10 years. I mean, you know, it's not like we've grown a neighborhood, or is what Got I it. mean by that. Okay, okay. good. Yeah. Any other discussion on those? Good, good. Um, continue there, there, Dave. You had a couple of others the, on there. The Embarcadero link, particularly, is is it's a one piece of obviously a broader picture, but. 
picture Centennial Staircase, been lots of talk about a link. We have an objective that says link the Embarcadero with Old Town or Downtown at Centennial Stairway. Um, to what extent, you know, I mean, Rob and I could, you know, try to do it, or we could, you know, find a student to do something. I'm just wondering how much to money to allocate for a great design for that, um, because it's or, or just wait and do it p as part of this bigger, broader GPLCP downtown specific plan, all that. I, I think the other part of that is we have uh, we need to determine the funding portion of that and the responsibility from. The property owner there so i think that's one thing we really need to, to so nail I, down. I i've i've talked to him um and there's really two ways to do this there is there is use his the funding he owes us to do just this little part which is get an elevator in there or something and have the have the old staircase and the old park and an elevator or to reconceptualize that as a as a welcoming, you heard Red say it, a welcoming link <laughs> from the Embarcadero up to the Dorns level, and then um, and then eventually on up uh, Morro Bay Boulevard to the downtown. I think the goal is a link. I think it goes beyond just putting an elevator there. I think there's the general yeah. general thought on that. Um, any other comments? Yeah, I, I'm just a little cautious about as the years go by, and there's been this commitment made by the property owner that uh, we could, I, I'd really want to make sure legally we're still retaining the value that the agreement was signed to for the community and that if we do spend more time trying to make this connect with a larger vision, we're not losing value on his commitment to you know, helping to fund that component to it. So to make sure that I, I concur there. with you, every year that goes by, our case is weaker. Yep. Um, I talked to him within the last 10 days. He understands his responsibility. Um, but I, I think if you picture that in a redesign and a re execute the design's one thing, but then executing some new, new link. So let me just throw something out there, an idea of having an amphitheater there <laughs> um, that had an amphitheater with the elevator where you could sit there, you could have a... a bandstand at the bottom or you can hang out there with a coffee and look at the rock there'd be stairs but that's a kind you know that's a design where you pace an architect to give us a great design that that has all of those things in it and that would um the execution of that what he owes us is not going to pay for that whole thing we're going to have to fund a portion of that a, a significant portion of that ourselves but just at least to get the design in place um, is Rob could probably do it. He did a great parklet, but uh, but do we you know do we do we want to get some architectural landscape architect help to vision that for us as maybe a first step to a broader Embarcadero plan and downtown plan? I, I think I would agree the broader vision, but I also um, uh, with conversations from Slowcog, I think we could you know th there are some. Perhaps hopeful assistance there because it is a broader, broader project. Matt, you had some questions. Um, to me, to this isn't necessarily a, um, a separated piece of the Embarcadero. This is going to be tied to our bike bike bridge across the uh, um, the, the creek to some sort of exit way. When we talk, when um, when we have our bicycle needs and people coming down the Embarcadero, and so, but it's not just the Embarcadero. This is going to tie strategically to our LE, the LEP process and our down in our old town downtown vision, tying these two parts of Morro Bay together. Whether it's the amphitheater idea you bring up, Dave, or however we're going to go into the um, downtown section, it's the instrumental, and it is. I agree with what Jamie's saying. It's not just an elevator and you know putting some uh, um, varnish on the stairway. This is a, a big piece of tying these two pieces. So in terms of priority, it's more than just this small section. I think there's a number of sections that we've talked about tonight that it's in. Okay, and since we have to conclude here in a minute, the only last question I'd like to get in is basically on the approved water supply diversification. Just kind of when we come back, just understand what that financial obligation is for that entire goal so we understand what we're looking at for that. And then also um, your question about ADA compliance issues. Is there um, any legal, uh, are there any legal issues that are pushing this now? For Tons. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been. That's a dumb question, huh? It's, well, it's been 20 years <laughs> it's, since yeah. we did an assessment. 
Yeah. Over that time, we checked one or two things off the list that it said to do. I yeah. realize this is recorded. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but that's right. So I, I, I think it's time for us to, A, do another assessment to figure out what we need to do to get ADA compliant, mm -hmm. and then develop a 15-year plan to check those things off the list and stick them in the budget to do that. The, the question was on purpose to make sure that everybody knew that we have to do it. Right. So. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. All right, with that, we will... Um, we will not adjourn this meeting. At this point, we're going to conclude our budget workshop, and uh, the second portion of this, um, we will conclude um, a closed session meeting at City Hall, um, which will be at 595 Harbor Street. So from here, we'll, con we'll conclude the meeting um, for the study session. We'll recess it. We'll reopen the meeting at um, um, 595 Harbor Street in the City Hall conference room for uh, closed session employee performance evaluation. So, so we will recess and reconvene at the city hall. Thank you. <laughs>